Bwana asifiwe. Welcome to this house of the Lord. Welcome to our service. This is Shiloh, the place of breakthrough. And we want to thank God for this far because because he has been so, so faithful. What's fail us? And for this, we want to say thank you. My name is Beatrice. I know we might have visitors. My name is Beatrice Waitaka. And I'm born again. I love the Lord so, so much. It's my family, it's my friend, my lover, my everything. I know that this far it has taken the Lord. It's my joy to serve in this place. I serve under Bishop and Pastor Alice and other pastors. This is where we come for spiritual nourishment. This is where we bring our cars for refueling. This is where we come to be filled, where earthly things have left us dry. I want to thank God I've been on leave. Uh, did you know I was on leave? Are you sure? Okay, yes, I was on leave. Yes, I came back on Monday, and I want to thank God for my leave as I look forward for what the Lord has in store for me, the remaining part of this year. We've been going through Christian spiritual disciplines from the month of July, and we are not yet through because there are so many. And for you to be all rounded, you need all these disciplines. And then th when you have all of them, then the Lord can call you home. But before you have all of them, the Lord wants to impart them to you so that you can be all rounded. Last Sunday, our bishop took us through prayer. And I know those who are here and those who watched online. And today we want to look at fasting. Fasting is our topic this morning. We want to read from the book of Matthew 6, 16 to 18. The Bible says, when you fast, this is Jesus Christ. He was addressing his disciples, and he said, when, not if you fast. If, you can decide to fast or not, but when, when is mandatory. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. Verse 18. So that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This was Jesus. Before he left the earth, he knew that the disciples cannot be complete without that, without that segment of fasting. And that's why he told them, when you fast, because fasting is voluntary. There's no church that can tell you, here we, you must fast. No. Fasting is voluntary. It is a, a, a strictly biblical sense. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. When you fast, you want to enrich your inner man, not the outer man. This outer man is enriched by food, but the inner man is enriched by fasting. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 3.3, 3, but God did, did say, you must not eat the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. The tree was in the garden, not only in the garden, but in the middle. Are we together? Where is your stomach? In the middle. Are we together? Do you have a stomach? Where is it? In the middle. Friends, if Eve and Adam never ate of the fruit, we could not be in the calamities that we are facing today. Man became poor because of eating. Because the moment he ate the fruit, they were chased away from the Garden of Eden. And when they were chased away, that is what they went to do. This that they ever did in the garden. I said this during our encounter this year. That when Adam and Eve were living in the garden of Eden, they had no children. 
Do you have a witness? When they were chased out, that's where they, go, they conceived Cain and Abel. And we can just tell the type of children they brought up. Friends, we cannot make it in this journey of faith. We cannot make it in salvation without fasting. When you fast, as Paul said, that you put this body under subjection. Because this body will tell you, no, I am hungry. The stomach knows the timings of food. Even when you wake up in the morning, you have not even washed your face. You have not even brushed your, your teeth. But you are come have the gas to go to the kitchen. Look for something to eat. Because this body feeds from the stomach. Are we together? I said this in the first service. That when COVID-19 struck in our nation... Companies, institutions closed, and people are told to do what? To work from? Where did you work from? You worked from the kitchen. And lo and behold, when we came back to the office, you had no clothes to could have fit you. Because you worked from where? From the kitchen. Fasting is a spiritual weapon, not physical. When you go to armories, you can be shown, this is our armory. There are different kinds of guns or different kinds of weapons. We can see them with our eyes. But spiritually, you cannot see what fasting does in your life unless you fast. And I said in the first service that people can pray for you. Please remember me in prayer. When you are praying, pray, remember me. But who can fast for you? People are so selfish. Nobody can miss a meal because they want to fast for you. Fasting, it is personal. It is fast that put, what you are going through are the things that pushes you and you say, now from this hour, me and the plate, we are going to give a, 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 a self space. You sit on your, your seat, I sit on my seat. You cannot make it in this journey without fasting. Because this body knows where we are going. And it's not going anywhere. The end of this body is three by six in the grave. But your spirit man is going somewhere. How can we equip your spirit man? Only by fasting. You put this body under subjection to make that sure that your inner man is well-rounded. Are we together? Many important figures of the Bible, like David like Elijah, like Anna, like Hannah, sorry, the, like Esther, like Paul in the New Testament and Jesus. All these people, they had a mark in the Bible because they, they did not pray, but they did what? They fasted. Because all the others that are not, are not mentioned, they prayed. But this one stood up because they fasted. One day in a week, two days in a week, one meal in a day. Friends, fasting can take us places. There are treasures that we don't know and you can only about them when you have the key to open into that door that is written fasting. You cannot send me to that room. It is only you who have the access of that room. Those who live in one room, that when you stretch your right hand, you're in the kitchen. Your left hand, you are in there bedroom. You are flat feet, you are outside. You only use one key. But the beauty is, the Lord has given us a bunch of keys. One key opens prayer. One key opens praise. One key opens worship. One key opens fasting. The key that opens fasting can cannot open the room for prayer. You need to use the bunch. And this afternoon, when we go through the this discipline, Christian disciplines, use the key of fasting. There are so many that are in that treasure that in that room that you don't know. That when you open that room, you can say, I wish I knew. This is what I'll be looking for. Somebody during a wedding was given a gift. And in this gift, it was a Bible. In, inside that Bible, there was a check. And this man never opened. He said, so and so just thought of buying for me a Bible. I thought he could give me something big. This man despised the gift. And he put it aside. Along the way, life was not easy. But one day, 
after some months they met in town. And this man, the giver, asked him, did you receive my gift? And he said, yes. Are you sure you received my gift? He said, yes. And you know, nowadays, even lying, lying, lying in, among the Christians, it has become a normal routine. He said, yes. But this man said, you did not open my gift. He said, how do you know? He said, because inside that Bible, there was a check with so many digits. And I've gone to my bank, checked my bank statement. My, my statement does not reflect that anybody withdrew that money. And this man was so sorry. He went back home, opened the Bible. There was a check. And in that check, there was those figures. But lo and behold, it was already still. Friends, how many blessings had the Lord bestowed for you in that room where you're supposed to open with the key that is written, fasting? The beauty is, to our Lord, they cannot be still, but they are still waiting for you. You have the knowledge, the revelation, that you can go and open that room and see what is kept for you. Some of the struggles you are going through, they were not meant for us. Just because of ignorance, you said, me and fasting, what if I die? Better you die and go to heaven. Nobody has ever died because of, of doing what? Of fasting. You can be the first one to enter the Guinness Book of Record that so and so died because of fasting. I wish you knew the secret of fasting. Jesus told his disciples when you fast, because he knew and expected them to fast. In his absence, when he was with them, they never fasted. But he told me, when, when you fast, because he knew times will come, and this will be tough, that will require them to do what? To fast. It is the biblical way of humbling ourselves before God. You see me, I'm, you see me, I'm so humble. You are not humble. You are not humble, my sister, my brother. It's only fasting that can humble you. Fasting also helps us to renew our connection with God. Let me bring this to your attention. When you are fasting, when your stomach is empty, your ears are attentive. Because this, will do, this thing do not go together. When this person who sits in the middle is full, you are, he, he covers everything, even your ears, even your eyes. One of them must die. And your stomach must die. Put it under subjection and hear the Lord. It also empowers us to fulfill God's calling in our life. There are so many talents and gifts that are inside you. They have not been revealed because you have not touched the room that they are. You see me? Me I got born again 50 years. I'm still waiting for the Doing what? Waiting for him doing what? Jesus died to give us eternal life, but not to give us a crown. Crowns that you are going to receive in heaven will be out of what we did and our service to the Lord. Nobody was born again just to sit and warm the pews. We all have a calling. You can teach in the Sunday school. You can do praise and worship. You say, I don't have a voice. The Bible says, let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. No those who have keys. Are we together? Because you are singing unto who? Unto every one of us here. You have a gift and a talent. Fasting has to be a discipline. We normally talk about the discipline forces. When you look at the army, you say, these are disciplined forces. We ought to be disciplined Christians. When somebody looks at you and say, these are Christians. Because of what? Of discipline. Discipline yourself that this body, I will not be giving you food for one week. I will not give you food for two weeks because there is something that I am focusing to. When David came from, in the book of 1 Samuel, when David left and went for war, the enemies came back to Ziklag. The Bible says that they came, took the wives and the children. What was left, they burned. There was nothing in Ziklag. When David came back, he asked the Lord, can I pursue? And if I pursue, will I recover? 
the Lord said, yes. Friends, in this life, for us to recover, we must have focus. Our focus is heaven. No matter what we go through, our focus is heaven. And I'm going to put my body under subjection because I have a focus. I want to recover. I want to pursue. And I know when I pursue, I will recover. But all this, these are those of discipline. I cannot fast for you. You cannot fast for You tell me, yes, I remember you in prayer. But when you go to pray, you have a lot. And say, I'll pray for her tomorrow. Allow me to stay in my space. I pray for myself and I fast for my, because it is me who knows what I am going through. There are habits in our lives that you are going through circles and traits in your life, in your family. If at all you can know the secret of that extra key, and that key says fasting. A man can survive for three days without food and water. This body, doctors say that three quarters of this body, it is water. Three quarters. And a man, a man can survive for three days without food and without water. That one I have, I have, I have tried. We went to a, 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 a conference this week by the name of Lord Sent Me. And the speaker told us, when you preach to God's people, speak some that you have tried. Don't, tell them to go, don't try this at home. Me, I've tried this, and I know it works. That you can fast for three days without water. That is what the doctor said. That you cannot go beyond three days. But for me, I have gone for seven days without water. Without food and without water. Because therefore I know you can make it. And I tell you, friends, every spiritual level you want to arise, you cannot rise it on a silver plate. It needs sacrifice. Are we together? But you know that you can go for three weeks without food, but with water. Yes, three weeks you can do water alone without food. You can do three weeks with the juice, not juicily a blend. You know, you have blend, you But you can do juice here, the fresh, the fresh juice, yes. There's, there's nothing that passes through your intestines. Are we together, friends? This discipline is sacrifice, but you see the outcome. There are hidden treasures that cannot be revealed through fasting. Fasting is voluntary. Abstaining from food for a limited amount of time. It is voluntary. There are those who fast for days. There are those who fast for weeks. There are those who fast for months. And I, allow me to share this story. As a young man married, got married. Yeah, a man got married to a lady. And one day, they did not even have a child. And one day when they wake up, the lady could not see. Not even see her husband. She could not see anything in the house. And the husband said this. I will take a hundred days fasting without breakfast. He ate lunch. He ate supper. But for 100 days, he said, I will take 100 days. Engage God because of the sight of my, my wife. And this man began. One, consistency is very good. He fasted for 100 days. The 100 days in the morning, the wife saw. If this man fasted for only breakfast, what if you fast for three days? What if you fast for three meals in the morning, lunch and supper? It all depends what you want from the Lord. Are we together? Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. A writer by the name of Seneca. Seneca said this. By overloading the body with the food. Not loading. It is overloading the body with the food. You strangle the soul and render it less active. How many souls here are less active? Because you did what? We overloaded the body with the food. Food is good, but in proportion. You eat until you cannot breathe. Breathing becomes a problem. You eat until you cannot sleep. You turn this way because you, are, you did what? You overload. Even this body has limits. Friends, do not overload 
the body. Because it is the temple of the living God. Amen. The discipline of fasting is mentioned in the Bible more times than baptism. Today, we drive into how to get the most out of fasting, using it not only for the health of the body, but for the fitness of the spirit. You hear somebody saying, I want to fast for 15 days so that I can lose weight. That is an error. You, use, you, you fast to lose weight? So when the gym? You see how we, we quote scripture so that they can fit us. Are we together? When we fast, we withdraw ourselves from the craziness and rush of the world. When you fast. And that's where we have so many retreat centers for prayer and fasting. You know them. And I know people here fast. You hear people are going to this way. Me, i have going to several because me, I love fasting. That's why in those centers, you cannot see a sufuria. And that's what makes the difference between working from home and working from the kitchen. In those places, you cannot find a sufuria or a plate because it is one business. It is me and God. One of them, when you enter, it is written where humility means divinity. You don't meet your friend there. You meet what? Divinity. It is you and God. And coming from that place, you can say, for it, God speaks. We have heard God speaking to us through people, but here I've heard the Lord speaking to me. It is one on one. One as if you will. As I said, when we fast, we withdraw ourselves from the craziness and rush of the world and then make quietness inside ourselves by opening our hearts and minds to God. You come from your place, you disconnect from your place, and you connect yourself to, the, to, 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 to where the Lord is. And that's why we have so many centers for only one thing, just to seek the Lord. The purpose of fasting is not to obtain what we want from God. That's not the purpose. God is not a vending machine, an ATM machine, or a make vendor. You go to a finya hivi, mazo inatoka. No. Where you start a coin and your problem is instead of so no, it is in his timing. You pray and fast. You wait upon the Lord in fasting, tell him it is you and me. And in his timing, the Lord will come. You cannot bribe God. You cannot corrupt God that I want to fast for 21 days. When coming from this prayer mountain, I live here with my car. That, if that was what you are fasting for. I want to leave this place with a spouse. You see how we, 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 we joke with God? No. You fast, you do your part, then you wait for the Lord hears. And he takes those prayers, put them in a shelf. When his time is, is over, he comes and remembers you. When I see fever. The goal of fasting is God's glorification. You fast to glorify God, not to glorify yourself. Oh, your needs and, needs and wants will live with us. But when you glorify God, he shortens the time of waiting. If you want your voice to be heard when fasting, then your fasting must be practiced according to religious traditions that might go against the scriptures. You tell God, the scriptures say, man cannot live by bread alone. I want to test that now. That I can live for 21 days without eating bread. In this church, we begin 40 days in the month of January. And I know some of us fall along the way. Some of us eat, you are eating and hiding. Who are we? Who are, who are you cheating? That you eat, I will eat in the evening. Come on, Islamu. You eat in the evening, you have three meals. Friends, whatever you put in is what you are going to receive. Then you come here on Sunday, holier than thou. You don't even have Vaseline to put on your lips because you are fasting. And you know for sure the whole night we cook kula. I'll tell you this. It is a discipline. It is a discipline. Fasting involves a lot more than just from abstinence from food. When fasting, make sure that sin does not form a wall in between you 
and God. When you are when purpose to fast, tell the Lord, I want to repent every sin of omission and commission because I want to be holy before you. And because of that, the Lord gives you the grace to fast. But I was severe. Fasting is a temporal, physical demonstration that we believe the truth declared by the gospel. The Bible says in the Matthew 4.4, 4, and he said, and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. My prayer is that you hear the word because that will take you through. People have gone to prayer mountains. People have gone to pray. And when they go, they say, I'm here for seven days. But on the seventh day, the Lord says, no, add more seven days. When you are attentive, the Lord will feed this stomach. That's why this stomach cannot be left at home. This cloth or this dress, I can leave it in my wardrobe. But there's no way I can leave this stomach in the wardrobe. Are we together? It is yet to remind me that it needs discipline. Remind your stomach that it is time to do what? To fast. This food and me, we cannot go together. What I am going through now, unless I put the, the plate aside, the plate is going to win the battle. One day, my time, <laughs> let me say this. One day we, we were in, in Cataloni. And the pastor in Cataloni, the one in charge, used to live in Cataloni. And a friend of his came. Uh, he didn't have money to pay. You know, you pay daily. He didn't have the money to pay. And then he said to the pastor, because you live here, allow me to fast. I came here to fast, to seek the Lord. Allow me to fast when I'm sitting or living in your, in your house. And graciously, this pastor agreed. He wanted to be there for seven days. But on the fifth day, he left his room. He was going to the washroom. And going to the washroom, you, pass, you must pass through the, the dining. He passed. He saw no, the girl in the toilet, Moshi. And he went to the washroom, and then he came back. When he came back, he sat at the dining. And pastor asked him, what is happening? He said, the Lord has answered my prayers. <laughs> you see the difference of fasting at home and at the center? Because at the center, there are no sufferers. At the center, there are no plates. Friends, invest in yourself. Go to the prayer centers and say, I have come here. There's one thing that I normally tell the Lord, and this I have practiced. In my live days, I must have some days for the Lord. Therefore, when I go for live for one month, five or six days, they are not mine. I give them as a tithe to the Lord, and I go to the mountain. People have fasted. People, I went somewhere for fasting. And I met a young man. I told God, remember this young man. I met that man. He was there for 90 days. His waist, you could hold his waist this way. And I told God, I've come here for only 14 days. Remember this. I also saw another lady with a child of around three years. Where we, we, we normally pray during the day. You can sit under a tree. This lady was there crying to the Lord. And the tears were flowing from her eyes. This Kagali would come and wipe the tears of her mother. This way. And I told God, don't hear my prayers. Hear this lady. Going there with a child, breastfeeding mothers, go to seek the Lord. And you say, you cannot fast? Jesus said, when you fast... This breastfeeding mother, she's, there, she's not eating, but the child is breastfeeding. It is a discipline when I see fear. Amen. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 7, verse number 6. In the Old Testament, saints used to fast in times of mourning and national repentance. And this time, the children of Israel had sinned. And therefore, Samuel took them to the Mount of Mizpah. This is what the Bible says. So they gathered together at Mizpah. They drew water and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. In the book of Nehemiah 1 verse number 4, 
Nehemiah 1, verse number 4. The Bible says, so it was when I heard this word. These are the words that were spoken to Nehemiah concerning the, the, the walls of Jerusalem, that they were burned down. And so he said that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. In the book of Esther 4.16, Esther said, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and now will fast, will fast likewise. And so I'll, do, I'll go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Friends, fasting is against the law of this stomach or this body. But Esther said, I'll go to the king, which is against the law. If I perish, I, and I said, it's better you perish while fasting because you can go to heaven. However, fasting was no magical guarantee that God would answer as the intercessors wanted. And we find this from the servant of God, a man after God's own heart, a man known as David. King David fasted when he wanted to go to spare the life of Bathsheba's child, but the child died. We find this in the book of 2 Samuel 12, 16 to 20. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. If I can bring you to speed for those, I don't mean to assume that everybody knows this story. This was David. When men went to war, David remained behind. And as he slept, he thought he can go and bask in the sun. At the rooftop, he saw a lady bathing. And I want to talk to the ladies in this house. Please don't bathe outside. You are putting men into temptations. Because she had a bathroom. She had a bathroom. So David saw this lady bathing. And he watched. And he watched. And you know when you are watching, there's something that is created in your mind. And he said, who is that lady? told, it is Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. And because David has authority, had power, he said, go and call her for me. And when we came, there was no business. Or there was business. Was there anything they were selling? They went straight to the action. And she conceived. This is not Sunday school class. Are we together? And she conceived. But David knew one thing. What I am going to do is to kill the wife of, the husband too, this, so that I can remain. And for sure, that was what David did. He planned that Uriah be put in the front line so that the first arrow can shoot who? Uriah. And David, because he was man in authority, he gained it. But that day, this lady conceived. And she carried through the process, mourning her husband and enjoying the, the, the life with the king. But when this child was born, the child had complications and the child passed on. Let's continue. David fasted for seven days. How many days? Pleading for God that you would spare the life of this child. But friends, you cannot corrupt God. You cannot bribe God. Whatever you sow, you are going to do what? To reap. And this child died. You read at your own time. This child died. Let's look some, at some truths concerning fasting, and then I'll be out of your way. Number one, Jesus began his ministry with the 40 days fast. Jesus began his ministry with the 40 day fast. He also practiced fasting before healing and to overcome temptation. We find this in the book of Matthew 4, verse number 2. Then when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. Jesus, the son of the living God, was hungry. We fear to get to, to fast because we are going to get hungry. If Jesus got hungry, who are we? This period of fasting was an act of consecration to God and preparation for his ministry. You want to go higher? You must consecrate yourself and you must be prepared for what the Lord has kept before you. In the book of Mark 9.29, Mark 9.29, this is the story of a young man who was brought by his father to the disciples of Jesus. They could not be able to chase or cast away the demon. 
But the, the, the father, the disciples brought the, 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 this young man to Jesus. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and the demon went away. They asked him, how did you do it? This is what Jesus said in verse 29. This kind can come out only by prayer and fasting. Friends, there are some cycles. There are some trials that we are going through. There are baggage that we came with when we got born again. They have been going around your life. And you pray for one week, they are off. The second week, they are back. They can only go and leave you when you pray and fast. Are we together? Fasting has the power to break bonds of wickedness and to undo Heavy burdens and empower us to break every yoke. Some of these things, nobody can pray for you. You cannot be, you know, even anointing cannot help you. Even being placed hands by, hands by the ministers of the gospel or the men of God. It is you, because it is you who knows what you go through. It is you who knows what you entangled yourself with. It is you who can pray for yourself and break these chains. A man by the name of Richard Foster Richard Foster declares, fasting can bring breakthrough in the spiritual realm that will never happen in any other way. It means, it is a means of God's grace and blessing that should not be neglected any longer. More than any other discipline, fasting reveals the things that control us. What controls you? Is it anger? Is it unforgiveness? Is it you cannot love people? All this that controls us, we can bring them down through fasting. In the New Testament, churches fasted when they sought God's will and needed grace and strength to remain faithful to God's work. There were also times that they fasted, times of worship. In the book of Acts 13, 2 and 3, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me, Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Verse 3. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Having done what? Fasted. They fasted for the gospel. They fasted for God's work. I talked about 1 Corinthians 9.27 where Paul said, I discipline my body. Why did he say he disciplined his mind or his soul? Paul knew, my number one enemy, it is my body. He said, I dis but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Subject to putting it down, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Number two, fasting for the wrong reasons. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 58, verse 3 to 7, I wish you can read it at your own time. Please promise to go and read it. Yes. When people do not live as God desires, they should be prepared for fasting to accomplish nothing. You live as God desires. To see the manifest of your we are fasting. You must live as God desires. In Matthew 6.16, 6, we, 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 that was our open, open scripture. I just want to say that fasting is not for appearances. It is personal. And we said, the Father who sees in secret will reward you open. For us, we see what is happening on the open, but you don't know what happens in the inside. And that's where... It, Elisha told the, the widow, the, one, the, the, wish, the, the widow who had debts, when you enter into your house, do what? Close the door. Friends, it's high time you know how to open that room, no not fasting, and then you close the door, then you engage the Lord what you want in your life. Fasting is not a magical way of manipulating God into doing our will. It's not a way to get God to accomplish our plans, no. Neither is fasting a spiritual way to lose weight or control others. You cannot fast to, to lose weight. That is out of order. Amen. 
Number three, fasting is an opportunity. Fasting is an opportunity to lay down an appetite for food, for media, for shopping, and for many things. This act of self-denial may not seem huge, just a meal, but it brings us face to face with the hunger at the core of our being. Fasting exposes how we try to keep empty hunger at bay and again a sense of being, well-being by devouring creature comforts. Fasting is through self-denial and we begin to recognize what controls us. Our small denials of the self show us that just how little test we actually have to sacrifice our time with God. You deny yourself a meal. When your, stomach, when your stomach rolls, I'm hungry. Take a moment to turn from your emptiness to the nourishment of the will of God. What does the Lord say? When my stomach is asking for food, it is one o'clock now, it is two o'clock, I need to, to, to eat. What is the Lord saying? Fasting truth is not meant to discourage us. It is simply the first step in realizing we have to lay down our life in order to gain it again from the Lord. You lay it down as a person. The Lord raises it up after fasting. And that is the best place to be. When we fast, number one, when we fast, we communicate from the depth of our souls and our bodies that we genuinely desire to see God at our work. You must be fed up with the status quo, that you have been this way from January, that you've been praying for five minutes, for 30 minutes. It's only I, me, and myself. You go to Kesha. Those are the three things that you pray for. I, me, and myself. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Jehovah. Bless me, Master. Bless me, Creator. You must come out of that status quo. Number two, when we fast, we demonstrate in a word and deed that we know we can do nothing apart from God. We lay prostrate before his throne, cry out to him for his mercy, so as he can work in us and through us for his own good. You are God's property. Take care of the spiritual man. Take care of this body. And you know, friends, there are some sicknesses and diseases that can only come out when you fast. When you, I don't know what happened it, Maybe the doctors can correct you. I don't know what happens. But when you fast, there are some things that you see in your body and you feel that you didn't feel before. Therefore, I know there's something that connects the spirit and the physical through fasting. When we fast, we acknowledge that all good things come from God. Even our ability to fast. The God who gave you food, he can give you the ability to do what? to fast. You can tell food, I'm not fasting because I don't have food. I'm fasting because I know it is a discipline and I want to go higher. When you fast, you appeal to God to gently live to us who and what we truly treasure. You don't know what is in you. Open that door known as fasting. And I tell you, you will know what you've been carrying. When we fast, there are several things we are not doing. The do's and don'ts. We are not doing. We are not bribing God. We are not twisting his arm or demanding our selfish way. That it is my way. I'm fasting. You know this. It is my way. Let the way of God prevail. When we fast, another not doing is we are not trying to earn merit or favor with him. Fasting in itself doesn't bring righteousness, forgiveness, or even holiness. You just fast. And these are the things I'm bringing before you, God. If it is your will. And I know you have good will for me. And your desire for me is that I may flourish in this life. Therefore, as I conclude, as you fast, keep your eyes fixed unto the Lord. Remember these cautions. Always keep before you. It is all about him, through him, and from him. Always keep 
before you that it is all about God, through God, and from God. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless you this afternoon. What an awesome Father you are. But Father, you know us by our weakness and our strength and our shortcomings, King of all the glory. We desire to grow to your Father. Help us to pay the price. We know there is a price of growth, Jehovah Father. There is a price, Jehovah Father, for being lifted from one level to the other. And Abba Father, we are praying for the grace to fast. We know when we fast, Jehovah Father, many things will happen in our lives. We'll grow spiritually to your Father. We'll know you better to your Father. We'll hear you better to your Master. And therefore, this afternoon, we want to put this body under your subjection. And you know, dear Father, the stomach is there for the food and the food for the stomach. But we are pleading for one thing. Help us to make use of it so that we can benefit the gospel. We thank you and bless you. Maybe you are here this afternoon. And you'll be desiring to fast. But you say, I cannot fast because I'm diabetic. I cannot fast because I'm on medication. I cannot fast. You have so many reasons. But I want to submit to you this afternoon. Somebody told the Lord, heal me that I may serve you. The Lord told him, serve me and I'm going to heal you. Are you that kind of a person? You have so many reasons why you cannot fast. There are so many reasons that even missing a meal, you cannot. The Lord is saying this afternoon that I'm going to give you the grace to fast because I'm waiting for you in that room written fasting. I'm sitting there, there waiting for you. Open that room that we can connect with you. Open that room that we can dine with you. Open that room that you can know me better. If that is your prayer, just lift up your hand. When every eye is closed and every head bowed, lift up your hand and I'm going to pray for you. Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, you can see our hands to your Lord. We desire to fast. Because, you know, there are treasures that are for us. When we fast, your Father, I want to leave these hands to you, King of all the glory. Give us the grace. Because it can only come from you, Jehovah Father. Give us the grace to fast. We surrender our bodies to you. We send our stomach to you. We put this body under subjection because we know one thing. That this body cannot let us fast. Jehovah Father, it is our humble cry. Come, Jehovah. Come, King of all the glory, and walk with us in this journey. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.